Hi, I'm Dr. Yasser Rifai from Morocco. I, I will present this course about reading MS39 corneal intersegment OCT topography. I will, be, I will divide it in two parts. I have no financial disclosures. What is MS39? It's an anterior segment high resolution spectral domain OCT coupled with Placido discs. Corneal topography studied by Placido 22 rings. Elevations are studied by OCT, not Schoenflug, like Sarius or Pentacam. It gives better resolution, more accuracy, faster captures, less misalignment, non-sensible to opacity, scars and haze. What are indications? We have refractive surgery, ectasia suspicion or keratoconus suspicion, keratoconus follow-up, corneal diseases and scars, contact lens fitting, biometry, cataract evaluation, glaucoma, dry eye. What are options of this device? There are a lot of options that we will study in, in this uh, presentation. How to take captures? So the capture is very easy, it's fast. Uh, it can be done by the doctor, by the orthoptist. The patient should, should sit comfortably, fix the red light, open the eyelids. The capture is very fast, faster than Schoenflug, and the patient should stop uh, contact lens wearing days before uh, the capture. We have different five different capture in this device. We have corneal topography, we have high definition, definition OCT scans, we have pupillometry, we have tear film analysis for dry eye, and we have lens biometry and analysis. analysis. Corneal topography. So in corneal topography, we can have the four maps display, OCT section, keratoscopy, single map, 3D display, multi-maps display, IOL calculation, keratoconus summary display, some measurement tool, and glaucoma display, intra corneal ring segment display, and wavefront analysis. We should start by quality specification. We cannot uh, uh, use uh, captures or read captures or read maps if the quality is bad. So in this case, the quality is bad. The coverage quality of the keratoscope is very low. So we cannot, uh, uh, we cannot use these maps and we have to recapture. In this case, the, the coverage is good. It's, in, it's, it's green uh, in the coverage of sections and centration of keratoscopy and the uh, coverage of keratoscopy. So in this case, we have the same eye and we have done the first capture. So in the first capture, we had bad quality capture uh, because of the centrations is not very good. And we have uh, redone the, another capture in the same eye and we had a good quality acquisition. So uh, between these two captures, you will see the difference. So we had this with bad quality and we had to recapture and then we recaptured and we had a good one and in the left eye, left eye the same thing we had to recapture four or five times to have to have a good uh, uh, quality of the capture so we will compare this eye captured two times in the first time we had the bad quality acquisition due to centration so the, the patient was not well centrated and we had, in this case, the same eye with good centration and good quality. So in this, in this maps, you will have keratoconus suspect and you will have this shape of the cornea. You have a symmetric bow tie. You have a decentrated map. You have a, 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 thick, a, a thickening in the inferior part of the epithelial map but in the when the quality was good we have an island of uh, epithelial thinning uh, a donut image you have uh, an inferior steepening and you have a centered map and here we have keratoconus uh, uh, compatible so if 
we do not uh, uh, if if we we, we do not uh, uh, give importance to the quality we will analyze this map which is false but we have and we we should do the recapture to to avoid in this case misalignment so the patient was looking up in this case and uh, now the patient is looking straight and this these captures are reliable so here the capture is not reliable and here the capture is reliable these two captures of the same eye and we have the keratoscopy image four maps analysis four maps analysis is the standard uh, 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 four maps uh, with the thickness of the cornea with the tangential uh, anterior tangential map the anterior and the posterior elevations and with this uh, form map analysis we have this numeric data and we will start to analyze the numeric data before uh, uh, analyzing the maps what uh, what we have in this numeric data we have uh, 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 in the first of all, summary and this is summary and this is the most important and this is to look uh, to look for and to when to start uh, 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 reading a, a, a topography or MS thirty nine topography. So we have the H uh, HF, HVID. It, it is the horizontal white white. We have the pupil. We have the distance from the corneal center, the direction of the pupil. We have the thinnest location. The, or, or the, the thinnest point of the cornea and we will see its thickness and location we have the apex of the cornea its, loca its, its location its curvature which is called AKF which is apex keratoscopy front and it, it is what we know as K-max so the K-max in MS-39 is called AKF which is uh, apex kera uh, keratoscopy front we will also study the anterior chamber depth, which is uh, called AD. We will find it here. And in this case, it is 3.04 millimeters. And we can uh, analyze other parameters like scleral spur to scleral spur. And it is useful for the calculation uh, with the anterior chamber to calculate the, 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 the phakic AOLs. And we have uh, mer meridians and amy meridians, anterior and posterior. So meridians and amy meridians, uh, it is the keratometry of the anterior and the posterior surface. And we can uh, uh, we can study uh, the K1, the K2, the average, which is the KM, the cylinder and the axis uh, in the three millimeters, five millimeters, seven millimeters of the anterior surface, posterior surface, using meridians like this, or amy meridians like this, and the, the amy meridians will help, will help us to calculate the skewed radial axis, or the angulation of the, the, the steepest, uh, uh, of, of the, the steepest meridian. We will also analyze the epithelial indices which is very important here the thinnest location of the epithelium its position and its direction so we will study also the the epithelium in the three millimeters and the epithelium in the circle between three and six millimeters we will measure the the the, the we will have the measurement of the mini minimal uh, or the the thinnest location or the thinnest point of the epithelium in three millimeters the average and the maximum and then the minimum the average and the maximum in the circle between three and six millimeters and we will uh, see that we will uh, uh, analyze the the maps the epithelial maps uh, uh, after in this course we will uh, examine also shape and this is of the cornea so for every chosen diameter we can analyze the uh, uh, the, the ray uh, flat and the ray steep which is the k1 k flat or k2 the k steep in uh, in diopters or in millimeters we will also have the root mean square which is wavefront or abrasions 
in every surface and in, in the chosen uh, diameter and also the Q value or the asphericity uh, of the cornea of the surface of the cornea for the anterior and the surface of for the posterior in every chosen diameter so it we will uh, uh, sh the shape and this we will study by the keratometries by, uh, by the root mean square and the Q value we need to know some terminology to uh, for specific uh, 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 some terminology uh, in uh, MS39. It's a little bit different from the other devices, but it's the same principle. In Keratokos summary uh, display, we'll have this information, which is AKF, AKB, KVF, KVB. AKF. AKF is apex keratoscopy front. It is the K max, the steepest point of the front. We have the AKB, which is the apex keratoscopy back, which is the steepest point in the back of the cornea, which is the back K max. So we will have AKF, AKB, which is keratoscop keratoscopy, or the K max, anterior K max, and the posterior K max. And we will have some uh, information about elevations. Keratoconus vertex front, KVF which is the highest elevation in the front, and KVB, which is the keratoconus vertex back, highest elevations in the back. This KVB and KVF is different from the anterior and the posterior elevation. KVF and KVB is studied, uh, is the differential between the, the face uh, we will study of the cornea and a normal cornea. It's not like uh, elevations with, with, which is studied uh, uh, in reference to uh, best fit sphere. So here the reference is different. We have also in keratocos summary other parameters to study. We have the asymmetry, uh, 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 the, the, the asymmetry of the curvature and we have the BCV. So the asymmetry indexes are coming from the tangential maps and we have the SIF which is the symmetry index front and the SIB, which is the symmetry index back. And when we have a big asymmetry, it is, uh, it is in red, it means it is abnormal, or it is in, in yellow, which is mean it is borderline, or in green, which is normal. Base V, uh, there are elevation based indices, uh, is a parameter that, uh, 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 and that summarize the comma, trifold, and spherical aberrations. So we have the BCV front, BCV back, and BCV total. So in this display, we will have some information about the shape and information about the elevations. We will start maps analysis. The four standard maps or the, the four maps display which is standard where we have we will have the uh, corneal thickness map here the anterior, anterior tangential map here we will have the posterior elevation here and the elev uh, anterior elevation here you cannot change these maps you can only change colors and scales but we have another display which is more interesting it is the six map uh, uh, six map display and uh, in this in this uh, display you can change all the maps here uh, you can change these four maps without this uh, so the sagittal anterior and the sagittal posterior are, uh, are, are, are fixed but you can change this uh, four maps and you can customize you can choose the thickness map epithelial thickness map stromal thickness map anterior elevation posterior elevation stromal elevation uh, all maps we will study you can uh, uh, put it in this uh, uh, you can you can choose it in this four uh, places we will study map by map we'll start with the most important maps anterior sagittal map anterior sagittal map it is studied by the placido disc it is a specular uh, uh, topography it's like all other topographies so it uses the principle of axial uh, uh, keratometry and uh, for every surface we will have one axis and the measurement of the keratometry will, will be done uh, uh, using this uh, unique 
axis for all the the surface and using the in the refraction index of the 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 surface of, of the cornea which is the false one the 1.3375 we will study the actual map we will study the symmetry asymmetry we will can can have symmetric bowtie in in astigmatism round oval when there is no astigmatism and we can see a skewed uh, a skewed shape which will be confirmed by the anterior emi meridians this is a case of keratoconus which is abnormal so we have the great symmetry more than 1.5 diopter in the circle of 5 millimeters and you have the skewed shape and we can have in this phase in this in this surface all this uh, uh, this uh, these cases, all these shapes, uh, the Rani, uh, Rabinovich uh, uh, classification, and we will have round, oval, super steeping, and free steeping. Uh, we can have symmetric bow tie, symmetric bow tie with tracks, uh, asymmetric bow tie. Uh, we, we have uh, asymmetric bow tie with the inferior steeping, or uh, asymmetric bow tie with uh, super steeping. And we can have butterfly, crow, uh, crab claw, vertical D or irregular uh, shape. So this is uh, like all other topographies uh, that use the, the uh, Placido uh, disc. And we can have the 3D display to, uh, to see it in 3D and uh, to have a, a virtual idea about the shape of the cornea. This is anterior tangential map. The anterior tangential map is a little bit different from the sagittal map with its principle. The principle of tangential map is to study every point with, uh, with uh, an, an own axis. We, we call it uh, instantential map. Uh, it means that we will not use an, ac an axis for all the surface, but an axis for every point and we will have uh, uh, the uh, radius and uh, uh, calculate with the uh, refraction index of the cornea and we'll get the keratometry of every point and this this map is uh, here with, we have a keratoconus and uh, it is better for the location of the cone we have also a map which is very interesting it's posterior actual, actual map uh, and posterior sagittal map so here posterior axial map see the, the same principle and uh, here it, it is a, a normal case of a posterior sagittal uh, sorry the, the, it is uh, here a posterior sagittal map and uh, here a uh, posterior sagittal map of normal and uh, abnormal case this is normal and this is keratoconus and we have uh, tangential uh, maps uh, so this is uh, this is sagittal maps, actual maps, and this is tangential maps, and uh, this is a normal case, and this is a keratoconic case. Elevations, elevations like all uh, uh, all uh, tomography, all shame uh, flug or a slit lamp uh, uh, or uh, slit translation uh, tomography like orb scan, uh, you have the study of the anterior surface, the posterior surface. Uh, with a reference surface so it's the same principle uh, uh, reference surface is done in a manner to minimize the mean square errors and for every uh, surface of the irregular surface of the cornea or regular surface of the cornea the device will create a reference surface which is a BFS in in, in, uh, in the MS39 and we will compare every point of the surface with the reference surface and here the example the reference surface in this case will be a surface of 46.55 diopters with a q value of zero which means that uh, it is a perfect sphere anterior elevation anterior elevation is uh, is an important map but it will be enhanced with this stromal elevation Interior elevation, it means that we will study the elevation of the anterior surface with the epithelium. But the stromal elevation, 
it will be the analysis of the anterior elevation but without epithelium why because the epithelium have a masking effect of irregularities so if we if we use this map we will have some false positives or false negatives due to epithelium but if you if you use this map we will not have any any false uh, uh, due to epithelium because epithelium it is uh, it is not calculated in this elevation this is you can uh, you can say this is the elevation of the bowman layer so between these two maps i would prefer this one and you will see why in this case we have a keratoconus with an elevation of the anterior surface with epithelium and the same keratoconus with the anterior and uh, the anterior elevation without epithelium and you will see the difference here you will see that we will have more elevation here than here because here the, uh, the elevation is masked with the epithelium but here the elevation is not masked so this map is more sens sensitive and it's more accurate than the the, the anterior the standard elevation uh, uh, anterior elevation map posterior elevation is a very important map so you you have here a normal case when you have a symmetric bow tie or when we have an island but the values are very low but here you have an island with the values uh, very high and uh, uh, a red uh, uh, red color here so it means that the elevation is very high and this is a case of keratoconus Pachymetry map. Pachymetry map is not uh, a criteria of, the, of keratoconus diagnosis, but it is very helpful in refractive surgery. And we will study uh, the shape of the map. We will study the symmetry. We will study the inferior displacement of thinnest uh, location. So here. Uh, we will see the stromal pachymetry map. This is a different map from the other. It will study only the stroma. It will take off the epithelium and measure. So here, here we have a normal case and here we have a keratoconus scale. And this map is very, very interesting. Why? Because you will see the real shape and the, re the real shape of the, 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 the stromal ma map. You will see the real uh, uh, pachymetry of the stroma. It will help us in uh, the uh, protocols of cross-linking, it will help us. And you will see, this is the same case. Uh, so the displacement of the, the, the thinnest location is here moderate, but here it is more important. So this, this map is more sensible, sensitive uh, uh, or and more accurate than the total pachymetry map because there is no epithelial masking. It's better, not epithelium, better contrast, reflect reality of the strong. Epithelial mapping. Epithelial mapping is a huge development in corneal imaging. Epithelium is not homogeneous. Uh, an irregular stroma gives an irregular epithelium. This is a rule. It fills the gaps, smoothens the surface, hides some of surface aberrations of the stroma. So the epithelium is playing the game of the first aberrometric treatment of the anterior stroma it means that it will try to hide to mask the irregularities of the anterior stroma so if a, a surf if a, a, a layer is try, trying to uh, to hide irregularities it means that this layer is irregular it will tins in the peak of the cones, it will thicken around the peaks, and it will give us in keratoconus a donut image. This is the theory of early keratoconus done by, uh, but prof by uh, Professor Dan uh, Einstein. So we will see the behavior of the, the, the epithelium. In a normal cornea, the epithelium will be uh, regular. When you have uh, a keratoconus, a real keratoconus, you will see that the the stroma uh, there is a pro protrusion of the stroma and you will you will you will have uh, uh, an irregularity of the of the epithelium with thinning over the peak and thickening uh, around it to try to uh, to uh, uh, to have a regular surface so the epithelium by the movement of the eyelids 
uh, he will be uh, uh, more regular from the surface than uh, uh, than the posterior surface of the, the epithelium and he will try to um, uh, make the surface more more smooth or smoother and hide the irregularity so in this case the keratoconus is uh, is uh, very developed and we will see also the abnormality in topography but in this case in this case you see the, there is a protrusion of the stroma but the, ep the epithelium is thin in here and he will hide completely the keratoconus and in this case the topography will be normal but this is only the epithelial mapping uh, that we will uh, show that uh, there is a keratoconus and it is the cases of early keratoconus and in some cases we will we will have um, an inferior steepening in the topography but it is a false uh, false positive because the stroma is normal and uh, the epithelial mapping will show it that it is an hyperplasia of epithelium it is a thickening of the epithelium so you will see here that the behavior of epithelium and the epithelium will lead us to examine uh, uh, the, 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 the stroma. So we will explore in surface, but we will uh, 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 diagnose in depth. This is epithelium behavior that we have seen. We have a keratoconus here with the, the, the apex. Here we have the thinning of the epithelium and we have uh, the epithelial thickening. We will, you see here the shape of the posterior uh, uh, sur surface and the anterior surface. The posterior surface is more steep than the anterior surface because of the masking effect of the epithelium. You have here uh, a case with a uh, very uh, huge irregularity of the stroma, but the surface uh, of the cornea is uh, is regular uh, because of the filling effect of the epithelium so you cannot uh, uh, here uh, you cannot uh, say that the the cornea is regular because the irregularity is coming only from the epithelium but the reality is a very irregular stroma The normal epithelium. The normal epithelium is regular, is a little bit asymmetric. Uh, there is uh, a temporal superior thinning because of the eyelid movement, and there is a difference between uh, the super and the, the inferior part about five microns. It is sen sensitive to uh, contact lens wearing, dry eye, and surface diseases. Abnormal epithelium, you can see it here. Uh, it shows a donut image with a thinning in the apex and a thickening around it and we can see it here in 3D. So here we have the thinning part of the cornea and the, of the, the epithelium and the, the, the thick part of the, the epithelium. This is to uh, the, the modifications uh, uh, to, to hide the, the, uh, the apex of the cone. We have another picture here with a thickening here and thinning here because it is an asymmetric cone and we will have thickening and thinning. Another case with thickening and thinning and you have uh, the, the donut image. So epithelial mapping. Uh, we can have a thickening, uh, when we have a thickening in the inferior side without donut. It avoids fall positives. We can have an inferior steepening in topography, but it is not keratoconus because the, there is a thickening in this area. But we should correlate every time the epithelial mapping to action map elevations. And we have to pay attention to the association with basal membrane dystrophy, with uh, some opacities, and we have to uh, uh, correlate the mapping to the state lab examination or CT section. So look, look, uh, look here. You have uh, uh, a keratoconus, but you have in this area uh, a thickening. So it is, uh, it is uncommon. Normally, we should have all this area in blue, but here, and you see it in the in the three D that we will have 
a thickening here in the center of the donut. In this case, we should uh, examine the high definition OCT and in this case we will find opacities. And when there is an opacity in the apex of the cone, it means there is there will be a depression, small depressions of the anterior stroma that will be filled but a thickened uh, epithelium. So we we'll have the keratoconus but in the area of of the 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 scar you will have a thinning a focal thinning of the epithelium and of the of the stroma and a filling effect of the the epithelium here you have another case with a donut but you have a thickening here of the epithelium and when you see the 3d you can see it better that you have you have the donuts you have the thinning but in the center of the donut you have this thickening effect and this is coming from very 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 small uh, uh, opacities you so when you have this you have to go to examine the 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 uh, the, the the OCT scans and to look for uh, uh, hyperreflectivity and you you look for any small scar in this case also you have a keratoconus you have the, an advanced keratoconus but there is a thickening here and you see it in three dimensions and when you do the OCT you will find the 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 opacity the scar the the irregularity of the anterior stroma and the the feeling effect of the epithelium so every time you find a donut with an epithelial thickening in the center of the donut you will find an opacity in the OCT scans so in every epithelial mapping what should we analyze we should analyze thinning thickening and the thinning and the thickening and the values and you will have an idea about the shape of the cone the average thickness the shape of the epithelium the location of the thinning and the thickening and it is like a mirror uh, with the curvature mass and we should uh, 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 look for the difference between the thickest and the thinnest point And uh, when we analyze epithelial mapping, we should always correlate epithelium to slint lab examination, high definition, definition OCT scans, curvature maps, and elevation maps. And when we correlate this uh, epithelial map to slit lamp, to uh, curvature maps, to OCT scans, to elevation, we can know if it is a keratoconus, if it is an early keratoconus, if it is a false positive or a false negative, if there is any scar, if all the, the abnormalities are in the same place or in different place and to differentiate between keratoconus and other uh, uh, diseases of the cornea or other uh, situations like uh, scars and uh, uh, other uh, 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 corneal opacities or corneal dystrophies. This is the behavior of the epithelial mapping after uh, an intracorneal ring segment implantation. So we have here the thinning, the, uh, the epithelium thinning over the segment and the remodeling effect uh, of the epithelium inside. This is to avoid this uh, irregularity the epithelium will fill here this this gap the, uh, that's why we have this red area and uh, and this this is this part of the 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 apex of the keratocone with the thinning so we, you will have the thinning the normal thinning uh, of the epithelium uh, in the apex you will have the thinning over the, the rings and you have a thickening just inside the ring and you will have 
this cowboy hat. Uh, we have other uh, other maps uh, which is less used, like this uh, refractive power anterior uh, map, refractive power of uh, posti uh, of posterior, the refractive power map of posterior, and you have the equivalent refractive power map. And you have also the anterior chamber depth uh, map that we will give. It will give you the anterior uh, depth of the the anterior chamber, the, the depth of the anterior chamber in every point. Here it is coming from the the, the lens, and here from the iris. So uh, thank you very much. You will uh, follow the the second part of this uh, presentation in uh, the uh, another link uh, which will treat the the other options of the 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 ms39 and thank you very much uh, for listening to this first presentation